and leaders of our church as we journey through topics that inform, engage, and inspire the daily life of our church. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The View. I am not Joy Behar. <laughs> No, this is the roundtable from uh, Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us today. I'm Jay Clark, and I am one of the pastors on staff. My name is Daniel Curry. I'm on staff here at Pulaski Heights. Kathleen McMurray, one of the pastors here on staff. And I'm Abby Maynard. I'm another pastor on staff. So today we are going to be talking a little bit about grace. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is a two-parter. So we have to we have to leave on a cliffhanger. So you all be thinking <laughs> how we can do that to where people are going to come back and watch next week. Yeah. But um, first of all, if you are United Methodist, you've probably heard about grace yeah. uh, as a cornerstone of of our tradition and and belief. Uh, so how would you describe grace to someone who has no idea what we're talking about? Unmerited love and favor. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not something that we earn. It's a, a gift that is given mm-hmm. even when we don't deserve it. Unconditional yeah. was my word. Yeah. Just, yep. just being able to accept something that we don't deserve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a love that washes over that we can't ever do anything um, to match. What's the difference between... Um, the kind of grace that we offer each other and the grace that is offered by God to us. God's better at it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Often ours comes with conditions. I I think that's the thing. Like that ours, you know, we might try to imitate the grace of God, but we fall short all the time. Um, And we have to work a lot harder to get anywhere with it. It is a lot more difficult. Yeah. (laughs) I wish wish that I had an an ounce of God's patience sometimes, especially when it deals with grace. Yeah. And I I think that grace too, that, um, that God's grace, it, and, you know, we're talking a lot over the next couple of weeks, but that grace, um, I used to, I served a church called Grace, um, one of the churches that I served. That was the name of their church. Um, and we would often talk about grace with teeth or gritty grace that mm-hmm. like um, sometimes, I mean, that grace when it's given the way that God gives it, mm-hmm. um, it's messy and complicated um, because we people are messy and complicated um, and we hurt each other in ways that are really hard. Um, And so when we're talking about, you know, what is, what does forgiveness look like? What does grace look like? Um, But grace that's not cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, Grace that does, you know, um, when we say, you know, we forgive one another, like, but do we continue to have bad behavior? How are we, you know, how are we wrestling with that? And so I think um, we always talked about like grace with teeth or gritty grace that God certainly does it better because for us um, it gets really complicated because we are. Right. Like God would give a, a full box of chocolate covered strawberries where we would give someone half a box. Because we've eaten the we've other We've eaten ones. the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. But you know, when you go to other, I mean, you hear a lot about grace in United Methodist Church. Yes. I mean, you really do. More than more than I think. I mean, not that I have a lot of experience anywhere else, but I mean, why why is that? Why do you think that is? I mean, other than that was a focus of John Wesley, but why is grace a cornerstone for us? Well, I mean, we can't change the fact that God loves us. You know? <laughs> um, it is our ability to to run away from that at times. I mean, despite all of the things that we try and uh, push to get distance between God at times, God's always going to be there. Uh, And so that grace is always going to be present. God's love is always going to be present. So I think that's why we kind of lean on that as as our tradition within our denomination. And like I said, not not a whole lot of experience in other traditions as well for me, but uh, that's been very evident throughout my time in United Methodist Church. I don't think there's a way to say it without talking about John Wesley's, yeah. you know, love of it. Um, but I think it's partly because we believe that we're created in the image of God um, and that 
that means that we are created in an image that is love and that is perfection and that grace is this love that's calling us back to being that image of God. And that's so foundational to who we believe that we are, um, that we need that calling back all the time. And so I think it, we'd be doing some kind of disservice if it wasn't baked in. Um, and I don't, I don't know that every denomination has quite the same foundation in that way. Um, but yeah, I've I've mostly grown up in the Methodist church too. So yeah, and um, I grew up in the Methodist Church, but also in the Catholic Church. Um, and there is a difference in understanding, I mean, at least from what I remember uh, being a child in both denominations, that um, that there is this emphasis um, in the Catholic Church. Um, they, there is grace. I mean, it's not that it's not there, um, that there is forgiveness. Um but there also seemed to be um, a lot of kind of guilt baked in with mm-hmm. it. <laughs> um, whereas I think part of part of living into grace is that freedom from the guilt um, when we don't when we fall short or when we don't do enough. Again, not trying to to make it cheap, right? Um, but but that there is a difference there, and that the good works that we do. Um, it's not in order to achieve anything, um, but it is the good works that we do, the things that we do flow from the grace that we are given, that the love of God, the grace of God is given to us first, and then we live out an action. We're not trying to earn God's grace because it is unearned um, with our actions. Mm. I like to, to call it the, the however, mm. meaning that in the United Methodist Church, sure, we can we can preach about sin, we can preach about hellfire and brimstone and all that. But if you don't close it with the however, <laughs> God still loves you and offers us grace. Hmm. And you know, in in most United Methodist churches, not all, but in most, you get. I mean, there is a word of hope. Mm-hmm. It's not just you know, see you later. And, you know. And I think another thing that separates us, or at least that I perceived um, as a youth when I, you know, had had more interaction with different denominational people when I was in school <laughs> than sometimes I do now, right. um, being, working in the church. Um, but that there was at least a perception among, you know, adolescents um, that, grace was was given and was offered at the point that we were saved by Jesus Christ mm-hmm. um, a, a, and then then it's done like <laughs> which we'll get into some of that next week um, right. I know um, when we talk more about the way that we understand kind of threefold grace in John Wesley but um, but yeah that there's a different understanding mm-hmm. that it's um, it's continual and there's there is a there's that however that you're talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. And there's also, you know, we receive grace and there are works. Um, right. You know, that the grace empowers us uh, to, to live into that grace, to live into that love uh, and to follow suit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that a perfect example of that within our tradition comes from an open table. Like we are, we are extended this grace that is welcome to all. Um, and then we are then tasked with going forth from the table and, and experiencing that grace out in the world and giving that grace out in the world. So as we wrap up this session of, of talking about, of the round table, talking about grace, if you could say one word, grace equals blank. Ooh. What what do you think that would be? This wasn't on the list of things that we were no. supposed to no. do. No. <laughs> Off the cuff from <laughs> Reverend J. Clark. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Is it too cliche to say amazing? Can we just uh, <laughs> amazing grace? <laughs> this is amazing. Well, before we go too far down the road. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I, I mean, I, and I don't have an answer. But I was trying to think. Going back to the very first question, how do you describe grace to someone who doesn't mm-hmm. really have yeah. an understanding of it? Because we have a lot of churchy words uh, and, you know, 
when I think of Grace, I think of uh, the grandma from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> you know? We say Grace. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But Grace, Grace has been dead she for died. 40 years. She died a long <laughs> blushing. Um, well, or like anyway. in, uh, in is, is it in Hook, where uh, Robin Williams' character's like getting together with the Lost Boys and they're, you know, mm. um, yeah. don't we need to say Grace? And he starts, bless us, O Lord, and then they all just say Grace, and then they're done. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I think that a lot of people right. are familiar with the idea of like, saying grace mm -hmm. before a meal. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason why we call it that is because it comes from gratitude, um, that we have gratitude when grace is offered, um, that we are offering a word of gratitude um, for the grace that we receive from the blessings that we receive um, in that meal. Um, and so, Sorry, that was a sidetrack away from your one word. That's um, right. Yeah. <laughs> you have many words. I I have been trying to sit here and think of one word, and I can't settle on just one. Um, I I think like I like the idea of this challenge, but I think it's hard to settle on mm -hmm. just one. Yeah. Wholeness comes to mind, but like mm. I think that's one form of it. Um, sometimes I think grace feels like love, and sometimes I think grace feels like peace and. Um. Really, I'm about to start naming off the Advent words, but like, <laughs> it's all. <laughs> it is all of those kind of things, and I think sometimes it hits us um, as an, in different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Gift would be my word. Mm -hmm. I think. I was gonna say like something undeserved. Yeah, just yeah. it unexpected. It's if you receive a gift unexpected, you just you're thankful for it. You might say, Oh no, this isn't for me at times, but you accept it nonetheless and, and you're thankful for it. So All right. Well, we're going to talk more about grace uh, next week as well. So uh, this has been the Roundtable from Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. We're so glad you joined us, and we hope you'll tune in next week as we talk more about grace. <laughs>